Hey guys, welcome to Insight New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at the dance world in New York City. I'm your host, Ashini Mfuko, and we have a fabulous show planned for you today. First, you're gonna meet writer, producer, and director, Benjamin Ryan Nathan, who created the film, I Can Dance. It's a story that shows you how dance transforms the lives of kids in America's public schools. And later on in the show, I'm gonna have my boy, choreographer, dancer, and real estate agent, Angel Feliciano, give us some tips on how we can conquer this real estate world in New York City. Getting an apartment here is crazy. So Angel's gonna give us some tips on that. But first, I'm gonna take you around the corner to the Manhattan Movement and Arts Center and we're going to look at the New York Jazz Choreography Project. Check it out. A group of fellas found a new kind of music and they decided to call it jazz. Shani and Fuko here. I am at Manhattan Movement and Arts Center for the New York Jazz Choreography Project. It's going to be a fabulous show, and I'm here with the co-founder and co-artistic director, Marianne Hyun. This is your fifth year anniversary. Uh, tell me what's happening in the performance tonight. Tonight we're going to have 13 really terrifically talented perf uh, performers and choreographers. Um, we have choreographers who are various levels of experience, and we also have the legendary Luigi, so we're very excited about that. Choreographers can sometimes have a difficult time finding um, a place to perform, especially if they do very uh, traditional jazz, because it's not fashionable, if you will, but we are hoping we can change that someday. You're changing it, actually, and I love that you're changing it because I consider myself to be a jazz arena. I love jazz. I performed in two of your uh, performances. Well, th thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Sue Samuels and Jazz Roots Dance Company. Um, and I love jazz, and it's so hard to find traditional, classical jazz nowadays. So why was it important for you to start this organization? I feel that jazz is just as legitimate and, um, you know, wonderful art form as ballet or contemporary or hip-hop or tap and uh, I don't I love all of those things but I think jazz should be up there too and I just get the feeling it's not taken as seriously by people in the dance world I think maybe because a lot of times it's sort of an accessory like it's part of a musical theater show or it's like part of a TV show but it's not on a concert stage all by itself forms of dance have come out over the last few years and jazz seems to be pushed in, to the back burner now. We want to educate uh, this generation, future generations, even past generations about jazz dance because it, it uh, inspired a lot of the styles that you see today. No one really realizes that. So tell me about what your piece is and why you like to uh, present your work in this format. Well, uh, my piece is called Hieroglyphics, and my dancers are the hieroglyphics, and they create all the shapes and tell the story of, through using hieroglyphics, and I, the concept was they jump off a piece of papyrus paper and they create all the shapes uh, using their bodies. And I thought it was an interesting idea, and uh, I like to use this format because we have a lot of liberty with what we do as long as it's it's jazz dance. Um, you can create and inspire your dancers in any way you like um, and it, it's important to us to have that freedom of expression and and to utilize jazz as that vehicle. This is an organization that wants to do um, a lot of different styles in jazz at the same time so whether it's beginning choreographers, experienced choreographers, lyrical style, blues style or whatever it might be so it's a real good place to, to show 
show your work and it's getting a, a big notoriety. Tell me about your piece in the show tonight. All right, well, my piece is entitled Life and it's uh, to music by a group called Zero DB. So it's kind of a contemporary jazz kind of sound and the, the genre is called broken beat jazz. So it's jazz, but it's got a very um, highly syncopated accent to it that's not an easily danced to beat. Tell me about what your piece is about tonight. Um, my piece was actually inspired by my mom. Um, she had Alzheimer's and she has passed away. Um, so it was my dealing with her having Alzheimer's, um, her wanting to get out of where she was, and ultimately me letting go of her, not trying to fix her. They're trying to make her better and you know, and one day she just turned to me and she's like, just let me go. There's a need for concert jazz dance. I think there's a void in that area because there's a lot of theater dance and a lot of musical theater, but there's nothing for a jazz dancer and a jazz choreographer. Welcome back to Inside New York City Dance. I hope you enjoyed that video of the New York Jazz Choreography Project. I certainly enjoyed going there. Now I'm here with my first guest, Mr. Benjamin Ryan Nathan, writer, producer, and director of the film I Can Dance, a feature story about how dance is transforming the lives of students all across America in the public schools. So welcome to the show, Benjamin. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's good. And this is like your home because you know people here at Eminem. You have some contacts. It's all about film and TV. It's like one big community, It right? is one big family. Eminem's a fantastic place. It is. Thank you, because we're here. That's why. Uh, so tell me about what inspired you to create this film. So I was inspired to create I Can Dance because dance transformed my life. As a kid, I grew up in, in Manhattan and uh, in the fourth grade National Dance Institute, which was founded by Jacques D'Amboise. Mm -hmm. I came to my elementary school and my teacher said, you know, you're all going to go downstairs and dance. I said, not happening, <laughs> not me. I get picked on enough for being skinny. I don't need to start dancing on top of that. And she said, you're going downstairs. So I went down to the auditorium and I stood on the side of the room with my arms crossed. I was like, I'm not dancing, they can dance. And uh, I was the skinniest kid in the class. And I looked across the room and I saw the fattest kid in the class. He was dancing and I said, if he can dance, I can dance. That's right. <laughs> and that was the beginning for me. That whole really shifted my worldview. At the end of that first year, I was on stage dancing in unison with 1,000 other kids from all over, not only all over New York, but all over the world. Wow. And uh, it just, it, that was at Madison Square Garden. It changed my experience of what it meant to be a person, to be an individual, to be a group member, mm -hmm. uh, to do something communal like that in the arts. So it sounds like it gave you a lot of confidence too. It did. It really, it boosted my confidence, it boosted my creative sense of who I am and who I can create myself to be. And so later on I, I was a teacher for National Dance Institute in New Mexico and saw the kids there experiencing the same thing that I had experienced. Mm -hmm. And I said we need to create a film about how this impacts kids' lives, how this process of learning to dance and being exposed to the arts as a young child impacts children's lives, not only in the dance studio, not only to become dancers, but to become construction workers, doctors, lawyers, you know, TV producers, whatever it is, it's going to change their lives. And that's what this is about. That's wonderful. I watched the trailer that you guys have on your website. And um, it was so touching. I mean, I was really getting emotional, and I guess partly because I'm a teacher, so you know, I have a special place in my heart for for kids, and and just how dance really can transform your life. Because it did the same thing for me. I was young and you know a little chubby and not very confident at one point, and then I started to dance, and it all changed. So, what have you discovered as you've created this film um, and the kids all throughout the country as as you've been working on this? You know, it's interesting because we're shooting a lot with children in New York mm -hmm. and in New York public schools. But what, what we've learned is that children everywhere are having this experience. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in New York. And what's great about the message of the film is that you don't have to be in a big city right. to have this transformation happen. Um, you need to be exposed to the arts in a meaningful way, mm -hmm. in a way that, that engenders creative freedom. And, uh, you know, not, not, not just freeform freedom either. Right. It's, it's structured. Uh, the, my first 
five years dancing as a kid, I was in the back because I was tall. So they always put me in the back and they put of the course. short kids in the front. <laughs> and it took five years of, of sticking with it and being in the back to finally get noticed and get some parts and do some stuff up front. Right. And uh, it's that perseverance, it's that uh, teamwork, it's that seeing the possibility of anything mm -hmm. uh, in other people. Um, I had a student in New Mexico who, you know, I came into the class the first day and they said, well, you've got a boy in there who can't really use his arms too well. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay. So I, I walk in, I realize he has cerebral palsy. Oh, wow. And I decided to treat him just like every other kid. And he was demonstrating steps and he was, he was really good with tap. Wow. And by the end of the, and I just, you know, kept pushing him just like everybody else. And by the end of the year, he was dancing with his arms. And he didn't believe it, the doctors didn't believe it, his mother didn't believe it. And it's not unique to me, it's unique to this experience of children having dance in their lives at a young age. Now that's a transformation. And that's what we're showing, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So bullying has become an epidemic, you know, in schools across the country. And I think that dance in the schools can really help to bring the kids together, build up their confidence, you know, get them working as a team. How do you think dance in public schools can help to kind of combat the bullying epidemic? It's a, it's a great point. And we've seen children go from maybe kids who don't do so well in an academic setting. Mm -hmm. And suddenly even the teachers view the, these children differently and the other, their peers get to see each person in a different setting as well. Mm -hmm. And so somebody who might not be good in the classroom or who might not be so good at sports can excel in something else. And that's the opportunity for their teachers, for their parents, and for the other kids to see them in a different light and for them to see themselves differently. And that's what makes all the difference. So uh, when they're working together, when they're seeing each other differently, and when they're getting a new perspective on what each person is capable of, that's when you know, the shift away from bullying happens and the mm -hmm. shift to friendship and respect and uh, creativity and appreciation, that's yeah. when that happens. And collaboration, because kids love to create things, right? Yeah. And when you can work together with other kids and make up dances and stuff, I mean, that's a lot of fun. That's it's fun joyous. For that's it's fun the, for the joy of kids <laughs> dancing. It's this pure energy. And they creativity comes easy to kids. Oh, yeah. As adults, oh, yeah. we have to relearn to right. have that creative. We have to find inspiration. Right. Where's my inspiration? We think you know? it's complicated. Mm -hmm. But for them, it's very easy. I love that. So you were a little boy and uh, you started to dance. I know that some boys struggle. Some parents of young boys struggle. You know, they say, oh, I don't want my boys to dance, or they have kind of a negative, you know, view of it, but it was a good experience for you. What would you tell parents who have young boys about, you know, allowing their kids to really explore dance? It's not, it's not a bad thing. What, what would you tell them? Dance is one of the most natural art mediums that are out there. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, we move every day. Right. Jacques D'Amboise would say that, you know, shaking hands is choreography, walking down the street the way that we, if you ever watch some time-lapse photography of Grand Central Station, mm -hmm. we're all weaving in and out of each other. How do we do that? That's choreography. It's improvography. Right. And so dance is something that comes very naturally to us. Dance is a organized way of moving. So it's actually something that we're doing already. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to put, to give the, to give children the freedom to express themselves in this physical way is, is a gift. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there are going to be cultural stereotypes. Of course, there are going to be people with blocks around that. Yeah. I would encourage people to stay open to whatever their child, you know, expose them to math, expose them to science, expose them to basketball, expose them to dance, expose them to ice skating. You know, give, the, give them everything <laughs> and, and let them see what sparks them. And they may love something as a child and then grow up to do something else. Right but it's about those creative experiences as a young person that really make a difference. Yeah, and I think that uh, the physical aspect of it is also really good because, you know, obesity is, is really big now, even in young kids, not just in adults in America, but in exactly. young kids as well. So if you want to get your kids moving, and not to mention if they're moving in school, when they come home, they'll be more tired, so they just have time for homework, <laughs> then they go to then sleep. Then they go to bed. Parents, come on. This works it's for an everyone. easy choice. Yeah. And that's that's exactly, you know, in, in New Mexico, they've cut not only all arts programs, but uh -huh. dance uh, dance and physical education. There's no physical movement in the schools. It's terrible. And it's only through grant-based programs mm -hmm. that they're, these kids are having physical movement. So it's so critical to have the, I mean, it's, it's impacting children not only on a mental spiritual plane but also on a physical yeah. level of just that obesity epidemic and the you know childhood di diabetes that's that's happening yes. right now it's so critical 
to keep moving and keep the blood flowing. And it's the way that the body and the mind impacts health and impacts uh, well-being in general. Yeah, and that's something that you develop when you're a child. And then as you get older, since you're used to being active, then you want to continue to be active Exactly. for a lot of us. So what's next for this film? Because the film isn't done yet. I saw a trailer, which almost made me <laughs> almost made me cry. It was so beautiful. Thank what's you. next for the film, and how can we help you guys to complete it and, and support it? Great, thanks. So uh, we're at a very exciting time right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have all this great support going on in social media and in some traditional which media as well. Which is how we met, by which the way, is how we, we met, met on Twitter. <laughs> and thank you so much for all of your support and helping us to really get the word out. Okay. So we're raising money right now online. Icandancemovie.com is where people can go on it, online and make donations. Anything from $5, $1, $10, $1,000. We've got support of all different levels right now, and that's what's really exciting is about getting people involved. Anybody who sees that dance makes a difference to them, mm -hmm. to their children, or to people in their community should be contributing to this film and feel that they're a part of bringing dance and the experience of transformation through dance to everyone in the world, because yes, that's what it. we're all about. So that's how people can get involved right now. We want to hear people's stories mm -hmm. of how dance is impacting them and the people around them. And we're going to go around the country this coming year, and we're going to film some select webisodes of people and how dance is impacting kids' lives right now. And then starting next year, next fall, we're going to be shooting the film for a full school year from October 2013 through June 2014. And we're going to follow four kids who've never had dance before, nine years old, and we're going to be with them for a year. Whoa. And they're going to have their own cameras too. Are you serious? It's called oh, Kids with Cams. Kids with Cams, I love it. So I they're going to be at home. We're going to see like from a nine-year-old's eye view, what is it like to change and transform through this year? Of dance. That's amazing. You're doing some really incredible work. And for you guys, if you don't know, he's a tap dancer. I saw you tapping in that video. A little bit. And uh, you were getting down. So uh, you have skills yourself. And I'm glad that you're kind of sharing that with everyone. And um, just keep up what you're doing. It's wonderful. And Thank you. I want everyone to know about it. So you guys check out ICanDanceMovie.com and connect with Ben and support the film. And thank you for coming on the show, Ben. Thank you so much, Ashini. Thank you. When I was nine years old, I did not want to dance. I thought dance was only for girls. I was a smart, kind of gawky kid, and I got bullied a lot in school. The last thing I needed to do was start dancing. I was the skinniest kid in my class, and I looked across the room, and I saw the fattest kid in the class. He was dancing. I thought to myself, if he can dance, I can dance. I'm directing a feature-length film called I Can Dance about how dance transforms children's lives and empowers them in America's public schools. We're partnering with the National Dance Institute, an organization which has impacted the lives of over two million kids all over the world. I've also assembled an award-winning team of producers and advisors to help make I Can Dance a reality. But we can't do it without your help to kickstart production. I want to show you what I Can Dance is all about and ask you for your support to make this film. winning producers of Nickelodeon's mega hit, The Naked Brothers Band. Kids House Entertainment and Footage Films present I Can Dance. Written and directed by veteran filmmaker and dancer, Benjamin Ryan Nathan. You'll get children coming in. What are we gonna do? What is this dance stuff? I was like, okay, may, may, I'll just give it a try, but. It's not going to be nothing big, nothing big. I just thought it was a little unusual. I was thinking, no, I'm not going to do this. But then my friend started liking it. There's nothing like seeing a child's face when they've realized they've mastered something. A story of inspiration, hope, and triumph. I'm from Jersey City, so gangs are like everywhere. I can't even play outside in front of the door because my mom doesn't think it's safe. Our neighborhood is pretty tough. We come from the Bronx. We try to make it work. Hopefully in the future, maybe I can buy a home and, and get them out of the city. If I do dance, I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it because I know I'm doing something good. It makes you busy. So you can't like quit school and like go on gangs and stuff. And maybe you'll be in the Hall of Fame or something. 
will basically dance helps me express my feelings. The skills needed to succeed in the dance class are skills that they will use and take with them to negotiate their way through life. If you don't dance, you don't really know how to do a lot of things. Discipline and how to express myself in different ways. It sort of makes me express my dance so I don't always have to keep it inside. Dance set me straight. It's changed their genes. It's changed the way they think about themselves. Featuring Jacques Demboise and the children of National Dance Institute. Kids from all walks of life will learn to dance. The only competition is with themselves. Be part of the magic. I can dance. Hey guys, welcome back to Insight New York City Dance. I'm here with my boy, dancer, choreographer, and real estate agent, Mr. Angel Feliciano. Welcome to the show, Angel. Thank you, it's good to be here. It's great to have you. Thank you. We're talking about something really important. Yes. We dancers, artists in the city need to live somewhere, right? That's true. Last time I checked, we need to live someplace. So how do we go about finding something affordable right. in the Manhattan bubble, or even in the five boroughs, because it's mm -hmm. so competitive and it's so expensive. How do we find something that's affordable and that can be you know, comfortable for us to live in? No, definitely. I mean, just finding an apartment in the city alone is like a full-time job. Yes, it is. You know? Oh, my gosh. And, you know, you'd, people hire brokers to find them apartments, but the average rent is like 3400 3300 So, like, you, you know, you had asked is how do you find that affordable, you know, unit, that affordable apartment? And there are programs out there. For example, there's a program like uh, housing. It's called 8020 housing lotteries mm -hmm. where, you know, it's basically, and I'll plug the site, but if you don't make past a certain amount, let's say 30,000, you can apply. It's a full luxury building on 57th and 10th, you know, or Gosh. where have you. And they rent these one bedroom apartments for about $700 a month. And all you do is you apply, you forget that you've applied for them. Mm -hmm. And it's a lottery. If they pick you, your credit's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll have a one bedroom for like six ninety five seven fifty. Oh my gosh, and you mm -hmm. can stay there for as long as you want? Or Absolutely. Like you know, there, there's different restrictions. Like for example, you cannot, you're not allowed to sublet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just for either individual or family of two. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, a lot of programs like that coming up now where they don't really advertise them. They sure don't. Exactly, Hello. <laughs> exactly. But uh, you know, once you get the information, literally you'll just, you know, they'll update you with the list of all the 80-20 developments that, mm -hmm. you know, that happen. Okay, so. That, that's pretty good if you have good credit. Now, what if you're an artist right. and you don't have good credit? What do, you, what do you do? Where do you go? How do you find a place? Well, basically, you know, there's great platforms. Facebook, there's Craigslist. You know, you'll meet people. For example, if you're a dancer, you're going to take dance classes. Mm -hmm. Somebody's in your situation. You know, so especially in the outer boroughs, right. you know, you can find affordable, you know, three bedroom, get a little bit more space. And, you know, the rent will probably be up there, but not as much as in the city. Right. You know, if it's $1,900 and it's a two-bedroom, obviously that's something a little bit more feasible than yeah. paying, you know, $3,300 a month for right. a studio. Right, exactly. It's crazy. And yeah. I sometimes wonder how a lot of us artists do survive here in the city. Right. What are some of the kind of, like, key components that you need to have in place when you're looking for an apartment so that you can jump on it when you find one? Right, no, absolutely. I think, yeah, obviously, credit need, needs to be good. If your credit's not that good, you may need a guarantor. Okay. That's someone who can, like, either co-sign the lease for you, mm -hmm. and, you know, they basically assume the, the finance of the apartment if you're not able to pay the rent. Right. So, you know, you can ask your parents, you can ask family, friends to do that favor, but you definitely need to, you know, early bird gets the worm. Yes. So uh, if you see the apartment, look at it with your roommate immediately and then jump on it because, you know, it may not be available. I know, two hours later, maybe gone. Literally, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So let's say you don't have good credit, you don't want to have a roommate. What if you take five or six months worth of rent and you save that money, can you bring like a lump sum of money to a landlord and say, hey, I don't have great credit, but I do have this amount of money. Can we work out a deal? Like, right. how do you work that? Definitely, you know, with, with a real estate agent, you know, when, when they find you the place, for example, if you hire a real estate agent, their relationship with management has already been established. Right. You know, so they can negotiate with the landlord. Listen, can you bring the rent down an extra 300 bucks? Mm -hmm. We'll give you four months ahead. Right. Can you do that for us? And that's one of the powers of the real estate agents and what they can do 
if you're looking for a place to live. But yeah, obviously money talks. So if you do have six Hello. months that you can put down, <laughs> that will probably put you in a good situation, if you, especially if your credit isn't that good. Right, and I think what you said is important about having a real estate agent because you already have a relationship right. and you kind of know how to negotiate with the landlords and the management companies because I don't hear very often individuals negotiating the amount of a, of a rental right. with I, the landlord. Savvy people try to do it, but again, <laughs> it's these landlords, you know, they basically, to save costs on advertising, mm -hmm they will contact the real estate agent directly. And I literally get like 95 emails a day. Oh I can't even gosh. keep up. And it's just one of those things. It's great that there's a lot of inventory, but mm -hmm. they go literally like an apartment. I can see one tonight. Mm -hmm. And then in a matter of three days, it's gone. And I've already listed it, but it's, it's gone. Wow. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. You have to be aggressive, especially in New York, yeah. even in the outer boroughs, you know, because they do come into the market fast mm -hmm. and they leave pretty quickly. Oh my, you have to be aggressive in New York, period, period. right? Yeah. To survive here. Period. So Big that's time. really helpful. Tell us how we can contact you so that people who do need help finding apartments, they can you know, get in touch with you and, and get your help. Absolutely. Well, the website uh, is called nyc.gov, mm -hmm. and that's for the affordable housing websites. Uh, my website, angelfeliciano.com, that'll launch on Monday, but people can actually email me at info at angelfeliciano.com for any questions about apartments, you know, city neighborhood, and th you know, things like that. So that's really good so they can get in touch with you and get help. And then you're also on Facebook and Twitter. Yes. So tell me your Twitter handle and all oh, that. Oh, wow. What is my Twitter? Angel Feliciano. Your, your name? Can the you name. remember that? Yes. Is that, is that hard? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot for a second, but yeah, I think it's just my full name, Angel Feliciano, you know, on Twitter, and then you'll be able to find me there. This is the show, guys, Inside New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at the dance world in New York City. Find us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube at Inside NYC Dance and visit our website. Website. If you missed the past episode and you want to catch up, go to InsideNYCDance.com. See you later.